welcome back to the Cozy Channel. I thought today would be a great idea to introduce you to my family. My plant family, that is. As you can see behind me, there are several plants, but I actually have plants around my entire room and throughout my entire home. And I thought it would be a great idea to introduce you to each one of them and let you know what it takes to maintain them and help them thrive. So get excited to meet some of my leafy friends. Before I introduce you to my plants, I thought it would be best to issue a disclaimer. I am not a professional. In fact, I'm mostly self-taught. A lot of it comes from Google. Why are my leaves turning yellow? Why are my leaves falling off? You know, so some of these plants are a little less aesthetic than the ones you'll see on Instagram, but they're special to me all the same. So I hope you get excited to meet plants that are unique and special in their own way. This leafy plant is a Dracaena. As you can see, he's kind of outgrown his pot and I was thinking that repotting him might be a potential future video. Leave in the comments down below if you think that that's a great idea. The soil, as I feel it now, is bone dry. He needs to be watered. You can see that some of the tips of his leaves are also brown, meaning that he hasn't been watered properly. Although I am a, a plant mom, I never said I was a necessarily very good plant mom. <laughs> this plant is a Hoya Cressula. Hoyas are succulents, and that means that his leaves are thick and waxy. All Hoyas have thick and waxy leaves, and also all Hoyas bloom. You happen to catch him right at the perfect time, because as you can see, he has these buds ready to go. He should be blooming in the next week and a half or so. Um, this particular plant loves to bloom, and it does it several times a year. I'm very lucky. They're very easy to take care of. They require uh, minimal watering because they are succulents. In general, I'm not very good with succulents. However, Hoya seem to like me. <laughs> this giant plant is my Ficus elastica, uh, otherwise known as a rubber plant. Rubber is actually a naturally sourced material. It comes from a rubber plant. And these rubber plants have these large, beautiful leaves. They come in various colors, variegated and, and light colors and dark colors. Mine is a dark green with magenta undertones. She is very, very large and she's definitely outgrown her pot. I need to order a new pot for her. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> these are my succulents. As I said earlier, succulents baffle me. They're supposed to be one of the easiest to take care of. However, I never know if I'm overwatering them or underwatering them until too late when their leaves start becoming crispy or when they wrinkle up and fall off. Either way, I try to take as good care of them as I can. My favorite one is this beautiful guy over here. These lovely, lovely pointy tips. Uh, I think he is like a zebra plant or something. This lovely pot requires a lot of sun, but minimal watering. Then again, I might not be the best person to ask because like I said, these plants confuse me. <laughs> I have two baby jades. This one's my older one. As you can see, she's much larger than this one. This one is a recent present from my dad. And this one is one of the first plants I've ever owned. When I was first learning how to take care of plants, I underwatered her. She's a succulent, so like I said, I'm not so good at that. I tend to underwater her. Her leaves drooped a little bit. Once that happens to succulents, it's nearly impossible to get them to perk back up, and you just gotta live with your sort of deformed plant. They require minimal watering and regular sunlight. The cutest part of this plant is the small little guy right here, that I propagated from one of the leaves that had fallen off of the larger stems. Interesting thing about succulents is that they're very easy to propagate. For example, this small leaf, as you see, has roots growing from it. This is actually an unintentional propagation. It had fallen off on its own and it grew on its own, but this is kind of what it would look like if a leaf was propagated. You just put it straight into uh, the soil and you water it and it grows into its own individual plant. This big guy is Zach. He's named after the vine with the Zach, stop, you're gonna get in trouble, which I thought was hilarious at the time. Zach, stop. Zach, stop. You're gonna get in trouble. Zach. He was also one of the first plants I ever purchased. He is enormous. And he is a Sansevieria, or otherwise known as a mother-in-law's tongue or a snake plant. They are one of the 
easiest plants in the whole world to take care of. They require barely any watering, so if you're forgetful like me, then that works really well. And they just thrive on neglect. Um, in fact, I, rare, I almost never water this plant. Instead, I water the plant above it and it drips down into its soil. And he seems to be pretty happy with that setup. They require almost no sunlight. And like I said, they thrive on neglect. So they, they're a great beginner plant. They're actually a plant that naturally purifies the air of the room that it's in. So the air in my room <laughs> is very pure. Look at him, he's waving hello. Hello. Anyways, this is Zach. <laughs> I figured that I would show you my favorite plant now. Um, here she is. Is she not the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen in your entire life? She is a Hoya Carnosa. I have a Hoya Crassula, which I showed you beforehand. Um, she is long and beautiful, and I love her to death. Her name is Lizzie, and she's named after Elizabeth Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. And I just absolutely adore her. She's always happy with whatever you put her up to. She requires just regular watering and regular maintenance, but she's not high maintenance. She doesn't require too much. And she just, ugh, I just adore her. <laughs> I just love her so much. Um, here's a little close up on her leaves. They're variegated, which is what it means when it has this two-toned look on the leaves. And she's in this adorable pot that I got from TJ Maxx, which has these constellations on it. Um, I love her very much. This long leafy guy is my silver pothos. He extends to all of this. He is beautiful and I love the color of the leaves. They're actually sparkly. Like they look like they have glitter on them. <laughs> I don't know if the camera catches it, but the leaves are just absolutely gorgeous. This particular plant took me a very long time to figure out how to take care of. So he's a little worse for wear, but he's still a very beloved member of the family. Yeah, this is my philodendron. She lives right above Zach, my snake plant. Um, she requires regular watering and I allow her water to drip out of the hole at the bottom of her pot and water Zach because Zach requires so little watering. I kind of forget that she exists. <laughs> so, I kind of forget that she exists sometimes. So she has some crusty leaves, but she's lovely all the same. <laughs> Golden pothos are rarely referred to as a glamorous plant. They're kind of basic, really beginner plants, easy to take care of, easy to maintain. However, my pothos has gotten so enormously large that she can be strung around my, almost my entire room. She just goes on forever. And for that reason, her name is Beyonce. <laughs> she is truly my most glamorous plant and I've had her for quite some time. She started out as a plant about the size of Lizzie, if not smaller, but she's been around in the family for so long that she's just thrived and become this beautiful, gorgeous, giant pothos that I just, I adore her. She's kind of a focal point in my room, to be honest. She's like an absolute diva, <laughs> except for our low maintenance one, which we all love. Golden pothos like Beyonce are actually incredibly easy to propagate. And for that reason, I thought I'd introduce you to the newest members of the family, or the youngest ones, that is. These cute little propagated babies. You can see that this one has already started to grow a root, as well as this one. What I did was simply snip off one of the end leaves of one of Beyonce's tendrils at the node. If you look carefully, you can see there is a small bump on the stem. The node actually becomes the root so where the root is now is where the node used to be. If you do that, if you cut right beneath the node and you plop it in some water, you'll have a new pothos plant in several weeks time. Thank you for coming along with me to meet some of my plants, some being the keyword. I have several other larger plants that are hard to move around. So I figured that we would make that into a separate video. However, tonight was really fun and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Anyways, like and subscribe for more cozy content and let me know in the comments down below if there are any plants that you own or if you have a favorite. Anyways, take care of yourself.